Hi everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave. It's Gem here and today we're going to be continuing on with our nameplate challenge stroke HK5 project page in Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson. So this is part three. If you are watching this for the first time and you haven't seen the other ones, I shall leave a link in the description and also in the end card so that you can go back and watch the other ones. Really, I'm not doing anything different today uh, from the last day. I'm just going to continue on with the same colours I've used here for these little birdies and I'm going to do these two down here. As you can see I've kept a note of my colours so what I want to do is just quickly recap on those colours and then just get cracked on. I will sort of mention as I go through when I'm switching colours but I won't be going through it as a tutorial style. If you want to see how I coloured these and go through it in more of an instructional sense, again if you watch the previous video which is part two that uh, I explain it quite a lot as I'm going along. Okay, so the first thing is we have two pairs of pencils. The dark colour here that we used for the body, that was, um, these are all Prismacolor pencils, everyone. This was Cobalt Blue Hue, which is PC133. And I teamed that up with Denim Blue, which is PC1101. The other set of pencils, which is these paler areas in the middle, that was True Blue, which is PC903, and also Non Photo Blue, PC919. In addition to those, I have three sort of rogue pencils that I've been using, and I've been using them more for the sort of intricate parts of the patterns on these birds. So I have Indian Throne Blue, which is PC208. Light green, which is PC920, and finally the peacock blue, PC1027. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, I am just going to get zoomed in and we can get started. So just as before, I am starting off with these two darker blue pencils of the out of the pairs of pencils. So that's the cobalt and the denim. And the first thing I'm going to do is decide which areas of the bird I am making the, the sort of main colours. So I'm just going to map my colours out the way I usually do and decide what's going where. So starting off with the cobalt. So it is Friday today. I'm hoping to get this video out the same day, but just later on today. It is early morning here. Apologies for the crunching you can hear in the background. Jock and Pip both have some bones, some Nyla bones that they're chewing away on. It's keeping them occupied. And Woo the Jack Russell is asleep on the sofa bed as per usual. Yes, yeah, so I'm planning on getting this video out later on today. And uh, feeling that it will be Saturday morning, you know, UK time. So you guys should see this fairly quickly. It is very muggy and warm here. It has been this way for days we were supposed to get thunderstorms which we were hoping would clear the air a little bit and it's just not happened so uh, we're all very hot and sticky and incredibly uncomfortable which is nice <laughs> but it's very overcast um I, I hate the weather when it's like this i don't i would rather it be slightly colder and raining um or really hot you know sunshine kind of thing i hate this sort of in between it's awful Okay, I think that's pretty much what I'm going to use for the main part. So I'm switching to the denim blue now and I'm just going to decide where I'm putting my darker colours down. And I'm just putting a little tickle of that down, whatever it is that I decide it's going. And then I shall build it up in some layers. So I thought it might be appropriate, seeing as I'm not really giving much instruction here because I'm not doing anything different to the last video. I thought this might be a, a good time to tell you a, a little story as I go. It is my wedding anniversary this weekend. Um, we have been married for one year. And I know a lot of you wouldn't have known about that because when we got married this time last year, I only had about 300 subscribers. And obviously we have uh, we have grown in the ranks since then. Uh, so yes, I got married in the middle of July last year. We had a very small and quiet wedding. And uh, yeah, it was lovely. So I thought, yeah, it would be nice to tell the story of how Mr. Jem and I met. And that might entertain you while I'm scribbling away here. So it started back, some of you who have watched some of my other videos, you will know the story about me injuring my hand and nearly failing my second year of university. Thankfully, I didn't, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, 
and uh, I progressed into my third year, which was my general degree year. I did four years at university. And um, we had, we were at an agricultural college, even though our degree is awarded by a university, uh, with it being a specialist sort of industry, there are colleges that take agricultural students. Um, obviously, they're better set up in terms of farm type stuff. So our classes and lectures were very, very small. We were a very close-knit group and we had a lot of overlap with students on other courses. Now, one of the main overlaps was the agriculture students with the animal science students. So I was an animal science student and um, we, when we went into our degree year, we got our new timetable and um, obviously some of our, our classes overlapped with the agriculture students. Now there's a sort of standing joke and no one takes offence at it, but as a science student, we used to uh, talk about the big dumb farmer degree, which was the agriculture degree. So there was this sort of divide and it was say it was all in good fun. You know, there was nothing serious about it as there was only about 20 of us all together. Um, but we used to kind of poke fun at the agriculture students saying that they couldn't get a proper degree and all the rest of it. But you know, it was just a bit of a laugh and they used to call us the geek squad you know we were all the ones sitting there with our <laughs> with our scientific journals and our you know all that that sort of geeky good stuff uh so it was all in you know it was all in good fun and uh, when we went into our first lecture of our third year so this was about maybe september time I went in and it was all the familiar faces because by this point we'd been together for two years. You know, we all knew each other really well. And there was this stranger sitting in this class at, by himself and uh, he was kind of sat like off to the side. And another thing about the, the lectures you would always notice is you could pick out the science students and the agriculture students quite easily because the science students always sat at the front and the agriculture students were as far away from the lecturer as they could possibly be. <laughs> And here was this this guy. And of course, I'm poking my friend in the side going, who's that? And I was just, I was so taken with this, this guy that had turned up in our class. And he was tall, dark hair, beautiful blue eyes, really tanned, muscly arms. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so this transpired. It was Mr. Jem and nobody knew anything about him. He had an English accent, which not that common and I was like oh so he's come from somewhere else so uh, because again being a friendly bunch and obviously being um being quite a small group when it came to like a sort of break time we we got talking to him so we found out a little bit about him and uh, I can honestly say from that moment I was like I have to have this person I was just I was so taken with him and he was chatting away he was really relaxed and laid back and you know, for someone who was in a com you know a completely strange environment with a group of strangers uh, you know he was just so laid back and he was chatting away to everybody and one thing and another so um yeah over the next year we got to know each other really well and everyone was sort of hinting at oh you know you two should get together that kind of thing and the timing was just it was never right um initially he was seeing someone and that kind of burst my bubble a little bit I thought oh, well he's got he's you know he's got a partner that's that's that idea out the window and I kind of put it you know out of my mind and just sort of embraced him into the group as you know as friends as students and and peers kind of thing so we got to know each other over that year and uh, one day he walked up to me and he asked me out for a drink and it was completely out of the blue and I had literally just started seeing someone and I kind of regretted it a little bit, but I was like, no, no, I'm really sorry. But so the all this to and fro and went on for ages and all of our friends were just like, well, you two just sort everything out and just hurry up and get together because you're obviously meant to be together and you both like each other. So third year passed and Mr. Jem decided he was not staying on for his honours year. Um, he just did the, the general degree. And one of my friends was also graduating that year as well. And I was at the graduation ceremony for her. And I completely forgot that Mr. Jem was 
graduating as well and I saw him at the graduation ceremony and it was one of those ones where I'd, I'd almost kind of forgotten about him that sounds terrible but you know I just it, obviously it wasn't in my mind um, I wasn't thinking about him because it was well as far as I was concerned it was a dead duck a long time ago and he just appeared and he was in his robes and my heart just like flip-flopped and I was like, I have to, like, I can't leave this. I have to go and at least say hello to him and let him know that I'm here. So after the ceremony, and there were, I mean, there was like hundreds and hundreds of students milling about. And I, I went and actively sought him out. And it was the expression on his face when he saw me. He was so pleased to see me. Um, so I just ran up to him and congratulated him and gave him a hug. He was with his sister. And his sister's like, who's this random person running up to you and hugging you? Um and uh, you know I said to him I was like you know keep in touch don't be a stranger kind of thing so that was all fine and well um through my honours year we kept in touch and we 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 met up once or twice but it was it was as a group um you know with some of our other fellow students and we were pretty good at keeping in touch and that was really nice as well because obviously I enjoyed his company it was nice to see him and just after I graduated, I was single and uh, he got in touch with me and we finally went out for a, a drink and it was, it felt as if it should have happened like long before that. So this is like two years, almost two years after we'd met initially and it was just, it was kind of like just being out with an old friend. So uh, everything was very relaxed, but we had a conversation about you know, finishing uni and what we were going to do. And he was looking for the right job. He was working with his sister and he was wanting to go and get out of what he called a proper job. And we got into this great discussion about, you know, going to work on a farm, etc. And we kind of came to the conclusion that maybe we should like double team it. Who wouldn't want two young, fit people that were experienced but also had degrees to to run a farm? And we thought this was a great idea. So we started looking for, you know, for something that might suit, you know, and have for their, you know, to be work for both of us. And uh, while that was going on, we, we kind of dated, uh, you know, he used to come and stay with me at weekends and stuff and we'd go out or whatever. And we ended up with this this farm and it was the guy that owned it was an older guy but he was looking for like a farm manager and someone else to to help so that was like perfect for us we didn't see we didn't tell him that we weren't a couple or that we, you know we hadn't been together but I think at that point Mr Jem and I both knew that we probably were going to end up being a couple um but we we sort of omitted that from <laughs> when we were getting interviewed and uh, we ended up on this farm. It was the most horrendous experience of our life. The The guy that we were working for was just a crook. He was a horrible person and he wanted us to do things that weren't legal and neither Mr Jem nor I were comfortable with that. We only stayed three months at that farm and in that job and the what we went through was horrific we were we were still out vaccinating sheep at midnight and you know the middle of winter you know it was like minus seven and a half degrees and we got through all of that we got missed at that point as well because we didn't have a sheep dog and we sorely needed one so I think we kind of knew by it's by sort of coming into the winter we were kind of like resigned to the fact that you know, this is what we were doing, but we were getting closer at that point and we we, we kind of knew we were going to end up being a couple. So that was fine. But those three months, we never had a crossword. We never had an argument, even though we were working together and we were living in the same house. We, we never crossed each other once. And I mean, we were really, really tired. Mr. Jem got really thin, um, like horrendously thin. And I was starting to get kind of worried about him. And I realised at that point I really cared about him. And, you know, this is what I wanted to do. So into sort of October, November time, you know, we were kind of a couple by this point. And I said to him, I was like, we need to get out of here because this isn't 
you know, this isn't good for us. And he was, he was so thin and I didn't realise how bad it was getting, but he, he was stood in the bathroom one day and he had his shirt off and he was in, he was looking in the mirror and shaving and because he was leaning forward and his hands were up at his face, you know, I could see down his side and I could see every single one of his ribs and Mr. Jem has never been a skinny mini. He's always been quite a sort of chunky, wholesome, healthy farmer type. So I was, I was really, really shocked. Um, and uh, that was, so it was kind of a baptism of fire for us. So technically we actually only dated for about 10 weeks and then we moved in together <laughs> at this farm. And uh, we've been together nearly seven years now. So, and a lot of people said to us, you two are absolutely mad. Like even you, although we'd been friends for such, you know, such a long time, we'd been friends for a couple of years. They were like, you, you've you barely dated and all of a sudden you're going to move into this house together and start working together. Oh, it's never going to work. Um, but interestingly, all of our uni friends were, were like, yeah, that's you guys were meant to do that. And uh, so here we are, nearly seven years later, as I say, we got married last year. And uh, yeah, it's just like, I don't know, we, we have a, a very sort of independent relationship of each other and obviously Mr. Jem works a lot of long hours and uh, I don't see a huge amount of him on a day-to-day -day basis other than to feed him and climb into bed beside him. <laughs> um, sometimes it is like having a lodger but I, I am a person that very much needs my independence and in relationships in the past there is a lot of times where I've felt really smothered or that the other person is needy and they've not necessarily been needy. It's just because I'm, I like to sort of do things on my own. So our relationship actually works really, really well. And because we hardly see each other, we don't fight much. Um, I can count the number of arguments that Mr. Jem and I have had in seven years on, on one hand. And only two of them were really serious, you know, proper fights. So it, it makes for a very harmonious set up and people say that absence makes the heart grow fonder and I think it's true because the time that we do have together we really appreciate it and we look forward to spending time together and I think a lot of people that have more time together take that for granted sometimes um so it, it works for us I do like to have a mump and moan about it especially at harvest lambing because I really like I literally don't see him um he's just not there but it's only for a finite period of time every year and you get over it and you just kind of get on. So there you go. That is the, the story of Mr. Jim and I and how we got to where we are. I just think it's really funny though, after years and years of, um, you know, dating and, you know, and I just thought it was really funny that I'd been through all these relationships, you know, two, three year relationships. And I've always been more of a sort of cautious person with stuff like that. And um, I just sort of jumped straight into it with him because I think I just knew. Well, I knew when I met him that I wanted him. But <laughs> Right, I'm moving on to the paler set of colours now, which is the non-photo blue and the, the true blue. Okay, this one's a little bit easier because we've got a larger surface area that's less intricate. So I'm going to do these two parts here with these paler colours, but I'm just going to stick a quick layer down with the... <laughs> Can you hear Pip rattling about? <laughs> She's chucking her toys about. She always picks moments when I'm trying to do things, you know, when I, I need quiet before she starts this. But she's she's entertained and she's happy, so that's good. <laughs> I'll just get this down first and then we can work away a little bit more. I'm kind of feeling like these sections as well should be these colours, but I think it might sort of blend in too much. So I'll leave that just now and uh, we can we can have another go in a minute. Yeah, so Mr. Jim and I, we, uh, um, we, we kind, we kind of always talked about getting married. Just being that little bit older and being that little bit more sort of experienced in terms of relationships. One of the funny things that I found was that not only are we a similar age, um, Mr. Jim's only six months older than me, but it's quite rare to find someone especially in the farming community, someone that's in their late 20s that has never been married and doesn't have any children and neither 
Mr. Jem nor I had done either of those things previously so we always make the joke that we were maybe we were just waiting for each other <laughs> but everyone was always on us like will you two just hurry up and get together obviously that's what you both want so stop messing about and just get on with it but I think it was all about timing as well but I do often wonder if we'd got together because I did ask Mr. Jem at one point I said well, if we had got together while we were at university what do you think would have happened and he said well for a start I'd have probably stayed on for my honours year <laughs> I'm like well can't do much about that but it's all turned out all right in the end it's all good we make a good team as well we we can work together really well um obviously on the farm not that I do as much as I used to I mean I really don't and I try not to do anything because it takes away from from my own job but any time that we have to work together we work together really well we're a good team and uh, there's very rarely any disagreements or anything like that so yeah pretty harmonious but the getting married thing there was just it's just we've just never felt it's been the the right time and we didn't want it to be done just for the sake of doing it so we you know we waited a long time we were together nearly six years before we got married but everyone especially in the farming community because of our age I think as well anywhere we we went or you know if we had functions to go to or anything like that people just assumed that we were married yeah so a lot of the a lot of the farm staff as well thought thought we were married and when mr james said about going on his stag do you know obviously he's having time off for it they were all like who's stag do and he's like um my stag do and i'm like oh oh we thought you were married already nope so that came as quite a surprise to people. But I say, you know, people used to call me uh, Mrs. And I never corrected them. I just, just I was like, right, okay, whatever you think. <laughs> you know, no, no wedding ring on, no engagement ring on, but they still called me Mrs. But again, in farming, quite often people don't wear their wedding rings just for uh, safety or safekeeping. Um, so, yeah, just never. wasn't really an issue for us. But it's the question you get sometimes. And again, just the, the sort of attitude and the way people do things. It's like, oh, you two are in your 30s. You don't have any kids. What's wrong with you? <laughs> like, what? Um, so it's, it's the old sort of farming stereotypes. And I, I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. You know, we have sort of dragged ourselves into 2019 as a you know, collectively as an industry, but sometimes, especially with older farmers, like proper old school farmers, they're like, oh yeah, okay, you should have like three kids by now and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, no. We, 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 uh, we met a bit later on in life where we're not rushing anything, but we don't need to rush. But we, made, we actually made the decision to get married. It was like an executive decision. We were sitting in the, the departure lounge at the airport to go on holiday and that's the one time like the the minute Mr. Jem steps over the threshold of like security at an airport, he completely switches off and he actually does not think about work, talk about work. And it's really refreshing because it's constant normally. At the first time we went on holiday together, I was really concerned that he was just going to talk about work and he wasn't actually going to relax and switch off. I had I, I should, my concerns were like completely unfounded. Uh, so we were sat in the departure lounge, we were waiting for our flight to go on our holiday and we just started talking about it and, you know, I was saying, well, you know, look, time's going on, we're not getting any younger. If if it's something you want to do, you know, we're, we're in a position to do it now and he basically was like, yeah, I think we should do it and that was the decision made. So we uh, we got engaged when we got back and started planning the wedding. So it was it was just over a year and no more between getting engaged and actually getting married which it's actually quite a nice time scale um we didn't see the point we didn't need a long engagement having been together as long as we were so but and a lot of people now choose not to get married they don't see the need and I don't think there is the same need to be married as there used to be but it's just something that I feel quite sort of strongly about and maybe it's old-fashioned I don't know um but it's just something that I really wanted to do, so we went ahead and we did it. Okay, was little birdies looking quite nice now?
cheapy cheapy on this side i think i'm just going to stick to this bird i was going to jump over there you know just while i've got the, the same pencils in my hand but i think we'll finish off one bird at a time so i'm going to take the peacock blue now and we'll add in some bits i'm going to keep the the beaks the same on this side as well and just like i did before there we go that looks okay yeah <laughs> i'm just trying to pick out sections this because the patterns are, are different on all of them I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I actually want to come in with this Indian throne. And I feel like this should be in here. And I would like to take the true blue. Just make this interesting on this set. Make that really vibrant. Yeah. That's good. I was watching a, a program last night, um, you know, just talking about the age people, you know, do their sort of major life things. <laughs> and it was a, a program on pregnant women and, the, you know, the, they looked at different people who were pregnant at different ages and different places in their lives. And it was a really interesting program. Um, I, I like stuff like that, like I like the scientific side of it. So let's take the peacock blue and I think we'll go in here with the peacock blue. This will look quite nice. And uh, they, they spoke to uh, a girl at 15 who was having a baby. Now, the, the teenage pregnancy rates in the UK are like the highest in Europe. So we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty good for that. But I mean, 15 is young. 15 is really young. Um, so they were speaking to a girl at 15 who was pregnant. And then they spoke to someone who was in her early 20s. Someone who was the average age in the UK to have a baby, which apparently is 28. Now you know, useless piece of information for you. And they spoke to a woman in her mid-30s. Now once you're over 35, you're considered a higher risk pregnancy. And then they spoke to a woman in, who was 40 and then a lady who was 46. And it was really interesting to hear their stories and how they became pregnant. And, you know, because they looked a lot at like, their lifestyle and, you know, whether they'd planned their pregnancies, etc. And it was it was quite eye-opening, actually. But the lady at 46, who I would like to say looked absolutely fantastic and she would easily have passed for, like, I don't know, late 30s, um, her and her husband had been trying for, you know, six or seven years and they'd had IVF and one thing and another. Um, and people, she said that people, when her bump started to show, people were judging her because she was a bit older. And she said that she didn't care what people think because nobody knew what she'd been through to get to that point. Now, this lady had like miscarried twice or three times, um... But she ended up with twins, again, with IVF. If IVF is successful, quite often you have a multiple because they, they implant more than one embryo so that you've got a better chance of, like, one surviving. So this lady ended up with her first, her first birth with twins at 46. Um, and the babies were just so beautiful. They really were. Uh, and the, the little girl, 15, she her labour was seven hours and she had no gas or air and no drugs and she just gave birth and that was it. So I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but yeah, really, really interesting. Like, super interesting. Quite, quite entertained by stuff like that. Yeah, I'm quite glad I picked that peacock colour. That looks okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking maybe these parts in here will do the same. These are, again, teeny weeny spaces, guys. I don't need to worry too much about this. It's fine. It's all good. I was I was laughing. I was I was talking to my mum on the phone last night, and she was asking about the channel and how you guys are doing and everything. And we we'd had the the conversation about children. Uh, my brother has three children, um. So mum was sort of filling me in on how they were doing and stuff like that. And um, I was telling her about all the all the loveliness from the channel to do with kids. Uh, again, I can't remember who commented and said what. So please bear with me, but. Someone had left a comment that their child was watching uh, one of the videos with me and 
whoever it was had explained to the little one that because little one had asked you know why why i was talking funny and they said that uh, oh she's scottish and the, the little one said but i can understand what she's saying <laughs> just thought that was brilliant yeah there's an explanation for you mum going to go and go work that one out for your kid it's hilarious I also got sent a video I I said hello to to a certain little someone not that long ago and his mum sent me a video of him watching the video of me saying hello and he's waving at the iPad I was like oh my god my heart just melted I was like oh that is the cutest thing I have seen in ages but kids come out with the, the funniest things. They really do. Many, many years ago, this was a long, long time ago, um, my friend had, well, at the time she only had two children. She had a, a son who was not quite aged to start school and she had a, a tiny baby and uh, her birthday was coming up. And uh, I took her son... We, I used to babysit for her every now and then and uh, I took her son into town to get mum a, a, you know, a birthday present because he wanted to use his pocket money to buy his mum something for, for her birthday. So we decided we would get the train, which was exciting when you're four years old, obviously. And um, we we hopped on the train and it was only about, a, I don't know, like maybe a 20 minute train ride. It wasn't long. And this man got on the train and sat down behind me. So the, the little one was, was facing this guy that got on. And as soon as he got on, uh, the, the dread started to rise up inside me. Like, it, re it really, really did. And this little, we'll call the little boy Jack. So little Jack says, and I could see it in his face and he was just like absolutely bursting and he was desperate to say something. And I kept sort of like distracting him and changing the subject. And he waited, he waited until we had gotten off the train and into the train station. Now, most train stations are very big and echoey, aren't they? And at the top of his voice, he says to me, Jim, Jim, look, that man forgot to take his towel off his head. And I could have curled up and died right there on the spot. The gentleman in question was obviously wearing a turban. And this comment that Jack decided to announce at the top of his lungs, whilst holding my hand, by the way, reverberated round the entire train station and loads of people looked round and gave me the dirtiest look. And do you know that way I thought, oh, please just ground swallow me up right now. But the, the man turned round and he was smiling. Thank God he was smiling. And uh, he he just sort of smiled and laughed and walked away. And do you know that way I was kind of like running after him going, but by the way, this kid's not mine. <laughs> talk about embarrassing so I then had to have the conversation with Jack and explain to him what a turban was and why this man had it on his head and the fact that he hadn't really forgotten to take his towel off a good grief so <laughs> anyway we, we got we got a birthday present for mum and when we went home I, I told mum the story and I thought she was going to wet herself I actually thought she was going to die laughing but it's one of those things the area that we lived in well, it still is primarily white uh, white people you know there's very few people of color full stop um let alone someone with a turban on so it's just one of those things that had never come up in conversation um so we had to do a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of explaining but i just i'm so thankful that the man was you know he was good humored about it i don't i don't think he would have taken offense because see it was you could tell by the tone of jack's voice that he wasn't being nasty or mean or anything like that it was just this sort of in I don't know, sort of incredulous tone of voice that came out and he's like, can't believe he's forgotten to take his towel off his head. I was like, oh no, please just stop talking, child. <laughs> so yeah, that <laughs> that's one of those things. That's a great story to tell. And uh, I'm pretty sure his mum told him that story at his 18th birthday, you know, to embarrass him in front of all his friends. <laughs> Poor boy. Oh, jeez. I'm just sort of picking through my pencils here. I'm not, there's no sort of pattern to this or, you know, I'm just deciding what looks good as I go. That I'm really glad I've picked out this um, uh, light green because it seems to just set everything off quite well. So 
that's looking quite good. So we'll pop back over this side now. I know I've been kind of jumping about a bit, guys, but as I say, I'm not really doing anything different to the previous video. It's just more of an excuse for me to waffle on for an hour. <laughs> Righty-ho, let's see. So the beak on this side and the one up the top, I did have in the ending frame. So again, just in the interest of a bit of uniformity, I think I'll do the same down here. Put his little beaky bit in. And I'll do this little kind of like, what do they call I know it's called a comb on a, on a rooster, but I don't know what they're called on birds, whether it's the same thing. But these little pokey out feathers here. Yeah, okay, I think we'll do that. That looks good. Hmm. We'll keep these. I want to really separate the wings from this part of the body, so I'm going to keep this really dark and I'm just going to block colour these kind of like outline bordery type bits. Because that will really let these underneath parts pop out, which would be great. Yeah, I love it when kids say funny things. I've told the story before about my nephew playing Xbox with me and basically he thinks that I'm a dinosaur and what he forgets is that I've been playing video games since long before he was born. That was a bit of a baptism of fire for him. <laughs> funny all the same though. It's funny your perception of age though and I am a person that's not bothered by my age uh, there are things that happen that that just remind you of the age that you are. And I do think I forget that sometimes because I, I consider myself to be not that old. I'm in my mid-30s. I'm not that old. It wasn't that long ago that I was young and cool and, <laughs> and all that good stuff. And uh, but when especially when like nephews or nieces or, you know, your friends, kids or whatever, they say things to you and you're like, oh, goodness me. But I notice it. I notice more of a generational gap now. Um, the young shepherd that we have working for us, he is, he's just turned 21 and no more. And we have seen quite a few members of staff here in the last couple of years, all, all relatively young. And we, both myself and Mr. Jim, we notice a huge difference in the way that we would do things compared to the way the younger ones are doing things. And it, there is quite a stark difference. There really is. Um, and just really simple things like if you want to get in touch with someone, I would send a, a text message or I would phone someone. That would be the first thing that I would do if I wanted to get in touch with someone. Whereas the younger ones will send a WhatsApp or they will, you know, send a, a DM through Instagram or whatever, rather than actually picking up their phone and using it for its original intended purpose, which I think is really funny. But it's just the way the kids do it. And there's lots of stuff like that that make you realise that you are the age that you are. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I say, I'm not like, oh God, that makes me feel so old. It doesn't actually make me feel old. It makes me feel wise. <laughs> But there is a huge difference because when when we were teenagers, mobile phones were just coming in. You know, not everybody had them and they weren't, you know, smartphones. So we've kind of grown up as the generation that, uh, you know, we were the sort of guinea pigs. Whereas the, the younger generation that are coming up now, they've always had phones and they can't imagine a life without a, a smartphone. And it's very telling. Um... But we do, we frequently have to tell our younger members of staff to get off their phones. They literally, they're, they're like glued to their phones all the time. And, we, you know, we have a very relaxed policy. And obviously the boys use their phones to keep in touch with each, with each other during the day. And, you know, we don't expect people to not have their phone on them or not use it. But obviously not to take the mic. We did have a, a young gentleman who... Uh, his girlfriend basically phoned him like 16 times a day and he was always on the phone to her and eventually we had to say look you're like you're gonna have to stop sitting on your phone because he was making mistakes I mean he was on his phone while he was driving tractors and one thing and another and he was making mistakes because he wasn't paying attention to what he was doing and um, eventually we were like look if you can't 
if you can't behave like a big boy and pay attention to your work, we're going to confiscate your phone. You know, you're not about to allowed to use it at all while you're working. Um, so that helps a little bit. But yeah, the, the, the kids now are absolutely like surgically attached to their phones. But that's just um, that's just the way the world works now. I like to try and keep my screen time as minimal as possible. It's almost impossible for me now because of my job and the fact that I do very little manual labour anymore. And between my work, which I actually sit in front of two computer screens, not one, and obviously the channel, I spend a hell of time in front of a computer screen every day. So I make a conscious effort to not, you know, when I'm relaxing, to try and not be in front of a screen, which is annoying because I like to play video games. Um, but that's why I like to, that's why, first of all, I like to do traditional art. I like pencils and paper and paints. Uh, th that's, you know, I'd love to try digital art, but in terms of actually relaxing and whatever, I would rather have pencil and paper because it gives my eyes a rest. That's why I like colouring too. It's away from a screen. I don't need a screen to do it. Um, and I like to read as well. And I do make a point at night before I go to bed. That is when I read. I always read in bed. And it's it's just nice to be able to do that and not be squinting away at a, a computer screen. But we are a product of that environment now. Something happened to me and it was a couple of years ago now. And I went to, it was Pizza Hut of all places. I never go to Pizza Hut. And when I walked in, and it, it was like a, it was like a weekend and it was the afternoon. So the, you know, it was just kind of busy. I'm not happy with this blue down the back here. I'm going to go back to my original pair, the denim and the, the cobalt blue hue. And uh, when I walked in, it was like, it was eerily quiet, like really you know, and there was people in the restaurant. I was just like, what's going on? And when I looked around, there was all these families sitting around various tables and nearly every single one of those families were all looking at phones. The kids all had tablets, were playing on tablets. So everyone was sitting with their heads down, engrossed in their own little sort of electronic world. And no one was talking to each other. Like, and it was, it was freaky because it was so quiet. And I, and I was just like, I can't believe this is actually happening. You go out to a restaurant to to spend time with your family and converse, you know, that's, that's open, but no. And you see it more and more now. And it's uh, you know, like young couples out on dates and they're both staring down at their laps because they're looking at their phone. And yeah, it's uh, that's I find that kind of worrying. Okay, so there we go. That is our little birdies finished out. Let's have a little zoom out now. There we go, that's our little birdies all finished. Aren't they just the loveliest thing? Okay, so the other thing I wanted to do just before we finish up here is I wanted to pick out some colours for our flowers. Now, having had a look at the flowers, there, there's a variety of different types of flowers. So we have to think about, do we keep them all the same colour and just use different shades? Or do we do them in all different colours? Because we've got quite a sort of varied background, I would like to keep the flowers all the same colours. So I am going to um, have to pick out something that is complementary. So I've got my little colour wheel here. And I know some of you are a wee bit confused about picking colours, so I thought it would be an idea just to demonstrate this very, very briefly. So we've got, um, we've also got these sort of pearls going on, as well as the some sort of greenery you know, the leaves and things that are around about. So really we're looking for four colours. Now, if we follow this box here, and I can stick one corner in green and one corner in blue, if I follow this down, that gives me orange and sort of pinky red colours. So we could use oranges for the flowers and pinky reds on the pearls or vice versa. So that might work quite well because when we bring in the green, that's going to tie in in terms of our colour scheme, but also with the, the green that we've used in amongst our birds. So I think we'll probably do that. I would prefer pinks and reds for the flowers because that will give you a, you know, a, a much sort of broader scope in terms of, in terms of um, picking out your colours. Or alternatively, we could just go the full spectrum from, 
the, the pinks right through red and yellow and just have that as a sort of spectrum and colour everything else all in with that. So we have options there. But I think um, I think pinky reds maybe. But these flowers here are bugging me because they're clearly sunflowers. I'm pretty sure they're sun <laughs> sunflowers. So I don't know. I'll have to have a little think about that. But uh, I shall mull that over and we can look at it in a bit more depth in the next video. Hope you've enjoyed, guys. Thanks for coming along again. And we shall see you on Sunday. Exciting times. On Sunday is our palette full packs video, which was the coffee funded box that everybody voted that they decided that they wanted. So if that's something that you are into, tune in again on Sunday and you can see that in action. Have a good day everyone. Enjoy your Friday and we'll see you next time.